Once upon a time, an old clockmaker named Geppetto lived in Italy. Tick tick tock. Tick tick tock. Went all the clocks in his shop. Geppetto enjoyed his work and felt content. However, a wave of sadness would hit him when he took a break from work. Ah, he would think. I've lived my entire life with no child to call my own. So, one day, he carved a puppet from wood in the shape of a boy. He made the limbs so that the puppet could move. He made it a nice outfit as if it were a real boy. I will call you Pinocchio, said Geppetto. That night, Geppetto lay the wooden puppet down on the bed. From out of the window, a big star twinkled brightly. Geppetto gazed at the twinkling star through the window. Bright star, Geppetto thought. If I could make a wish, it would be to have my own real boy. But he knew that wasn't possible. The same big star swooshed right into Geppetto's room that night. It transformed into a blue fairy. The blue fairy landed on the bed. Little wooden puppet, the blue fairy said. You'll be able to walk and talk like a real boy in the morning. She tapped the puppet with her wand once. And you might turn into a real lad if you show eventually that you are brave and true. Pinocchio's eyes opened. There's one more thing, the blue fairy added. Suddenly, a cricket appeared. He could talk and was well dressed. Meet the cricket, the blue fairy said. He will remain by your side to assist you in making wise decisions. And then the blue fairy vanished with a swoosh. Out of the window, she disappeared into the darkness of the night. I will go take my puppet out of bed, Geppetto said when he awoke the next morning. However, the bed was empty. Here I am, father, exclaimed Pinocchio from across the room. Geppetto turned around. What? Could you speak? Yep. My name is Pinocchio, and I'm your boy. How can this be? Geppetto exclaimed in disbelief. He dashed over, grabbing the wooden puppet in his arms. Pinocchio, my son, he exclaimed joyfully. I want to go to school, like other boys, Pinocchio. Said one day. Of course, Geppetto replied. However, he lacked the funds to purchase schoolbooks. Later that day, Geppetto returned home with schoolbooks. Now you can go to school, he said. But where is your warm coat, father? Geppetto said, don't worry about that, waving his hand in the air. What matters is that you will attend school tomorrow. He didn't want Pinocchio to find out that he had sold his warm coat to purchase the schoolbooks. The following morning, Pinocchio bid Geppetto farewell. He hummed as he ran down the street toward the school. The cricket, who was also joyful, sat on his shoulder. A fox and a cat crossed their path. And where are you going today? The fox said. I'm going to school, Pinocchio said. On such a beautiful day as this? The fox said. The weather is too pleasant to be in class. You should join us at the fair. The fox said, listen to me, he slung his arm around Pinocchio's neck. The fair will teach you everything you need to know. Really? Pinocchio questioned. The fox said, take it from me. Pinocchio! The cricket exclaimed. He is talking nonsense, I tell you. The fox covered the cricket with his hat. No one could hear the little fellow as the cricket yelled, Pinocchio, do not listen to him. Okay, said Pinocchio. Come on, let's visit the fair. And then they left. What a fun fair. A man in white was standing by the gate. Come in, come in, he yelled. Straight ahead. Purchase your tickets here. I don't have any tickets, Pinocchio told the fox and cat with a sad expression. A man was selling old things at a table near the gate. Hey, you! He called out. 
Sell me those brand new textbooks you have. You can receive money for tickets in this way. The fair was so vibrant, vivid, and fascinating that before Pinocchio knew it, he had exchanged his textbooks for tickets. The cricket screamed, No, Pinocchio, halt, as he emerged from Fox's hat. However, the fox, the cat, and Pinocchio did not hear him. They had already entered the festival. On stage was a puppet show. I am a puppet, too, said Pinocchio. I can dance like that. He jumped onto the stage and started dancing with the other puppets. Look at that new puppet, exclaimed someone. There are no strings attached. No strings attached, asked another. Amazing. Everyone kept on laughing. The audience threw coins on the stage. The man who ran the fair saw coins fly onto the stage. Well, now, he said, rubbing his chin. This puppet with no strings will make me rich. The next thing Pinocchio knew, he was picked up and thrown in a birdcage. The door was locked shut shortly after that. The cricket frantically searched inside and outside of the cages for a way to unlock the latch. But he was unable to open it. Pinocchio exclaimed, I am stuck. How did I get myself into this? Poof! All of a sudden, the blue fairy was there. Please, Pinocchio pleaded. Can you help me? The blue fairy said, First, tell me something. How did you enter that cage? Tell her what happened, the cricket said. Could he honestly tell the blue fairy what had happened? What would she think of him? I got robbed, Pinocchio said. The blue fairy asked with a frown, is that right? Pinocchio's nose began to grow. Yes, I was robbed, Pinocchio said. By two mean men, no, four. The nose grew more. They took all of my books. They forced me to come here. And they put me in this cage. His nose was getting longer and longer until Pinocchio could see nothing but one big giant nose in front of his face. How come my nose is so big? Pinocchio screamed. Pinocchio, uttered the blue fairy sternly. You must comprehend what the truth is. I assume so, Pinocchio replied. I really wanted to go to the fair. I arrived with a fox and a cat. The nose became shorter. I had to sell some of my books to pay for tickets. Had to, the blue fairy asked. I mean, I decided to sell my books in order to buy tickets, he explained. The nose grew even shorter. Then they put me in this cage, he explained. The nose had returned to normal. Well done, Pinocchio, exclaimed the cricket. Well done, the blue fairy said. I'll get you out of here now. Pinocchio was freed from the cage with a wave of her wand. Pinocchio said, Here are your books, with a wave of her wand. And Pinocchio was holding the same brand new school books. Know this, the blue fairy warned, You're on your own from now on. Make certain that you do the right thing the next time. And then she was gone. Pinocchio was on his way to school. A coachman showed up. How about a ride, kid? No, thank you, Pinocchio replied. I'm off to school. You'll ride faster with me, the coachman said to Pinocchio. He'll ride faster, sure, but not to where he thinks he's going, he thought. All right, Pinocchio said. I want to get to school as soon as possible. When Pinocchio was inside the coach, the coachman asked, Say kid, why do you think boys like you go to school? To learn new things, Pinocchio explained. And, I suppose, to grow. So we can do whatever we want. What if I told you that you could do whatever you wanted right now, said the coachman. Right now? Yep. Give it a thought. Skip the books. Skip school. How about having all the candy you can eat right now? 
All the candy. Yep. Ice cream, too. Of all flavors. Ever wanted to smoke a cigar or play pool? Pleasure Island has it all. Pleasure Island? The best place in the world for boys like you. Don't listen to him, Pinocchio. Cricket yelled. Why wait? questioned the coachman. I know exactly where Pleasure Island is. This is your lucky day, young man. So, what do you think? Let's go, replied Pinocchio. I will go to Pleasure Island. Ugh, exclaimed the cricket as he waved his arms. The coach eventually came to a halt. You got a boy in that coach? a dark stranger asked the coachman. Yep. The coachman grabbed Pinocchio and threw him down onto the ground. He's completely yours. Now pay. The coachman reached out to the dark stranger for something. The coachman then drove off. What does it all mean? But as Pinocchio looked around, he forgot about the coachman. Everything the coachman told him was true. There were heaps of sweets and candies. There was a variety of ice cream flavors. Boys like him could eat and play all day long. None of them had to do any work. However, after a few days, something seemed strange. He asked the cricket, where have all the boys gone? Pinocchio remarked, all I see now are donkeys. One of his ears suddenly changed into a donkey ear. His other ear then turned into a donkey ear as well. The cricket exclaimed, oh. What is happening with you? I don't know, said Pinocchio worriedly. Pinocchio and the cricket watched a line of donkeys taken aboard a truck by a mysterious man in the dark. The cricket exclaimed, oh no. Ah, I see it now. Here, men are transformed into donkeys. The donkeys are then sold. Pinocchio, get out of here quickly while we still have the chance. Pinocchio exclaimed, let's run away from here. His two feet had become four. The cricket exclaimed, run, quickly. Pinocchio's new four legs enabled him to run very quickly, which was a plus. They left Pleasure Island in a hurry. They arrived at a port by the ocean. Excuse me, sir. Pinocchio cried out to a man near the port. I'm looking for an elderly man named Geppetto. Do you know him? Oh, Geppetto. That is the elderly man whose son vanished one morning and never returned. He set out on a boat to search for him. Since then, no one has seen the poor man. Oh no! Pinocchio exclaimed, This is all my fault. I must find my father. Pinocchio plunged into the sea from the port. The cricket followed suit. Pinocchio could float on the water because some of his body parts were still made of wood. He shouted, Father, as he used his arms to stir the water. But there was no response. Pinocchio could only see blue water all around him. Until, what was it, off in the distance? There was a burst of motion. Something large and swift. A huge whale appeared out of nowhere. It gulped Pinocchio in a single slurp. Pinocchio and the cricket plunged inside with all the seawater. When they came to a halt, they realized they were in the whale's black belly. Are you okay? said Pinocchio to the cricket. I am fine, said a voice of an old man. Wait a minute, said Pinocchio. Father, is that you? There was Geppetto. Father, father. It's me, said Pinocchio. My son, said Geppetto. I thought I was dreaming. They hugged in joy. Look, said Geppetto as three fish swam by. There goes our dinner. Father, I have an idea. Let's make a fire. Grilled fish tonight, said Geppetto. No, I mean for us to get out, said Pinocchio. He gathered driftwood and got a flame going. This is how we can make the whales sneeze, 
he said. Pinocchio waved his arms over the flame to make a lot of smoke. Soon, clouds of black smoke were rising. The whale sneezed. Pinocchio, Geppetto, and the cricket flew out of the whale's mouth in one large sneeze. They eventually rolled up to the coast after repeatedly rolling in the sea. Pinocchio? Geppetto rose to his feet. The cricket was there beside him. But where was Pinocchio? And then they found him. Pinocchio was face down, his head in a puddle. Pinocchio! It was too late for them. Geppetto and the cricket mourned Pinocchio, the boy puppet, who lay motionless in the water. Suddenly, the blue fairy appeared in a flash. Pinocchio, she said. You saved your father. You proved that you are both brave and true. She tapped his head with her wand. And now you will be a real boy. Pinocchio woke up. He looked at his soft arms and soft legs. Father, he cried out. Look! I am a real boy. Geppetto was overwhelmed with joy. Both son and father embraced each other. The blue fairy turned to the cricket. Come, she said. In a flash, the two of them were gone. After that, Geppetto and his son, Pinocchio, lived many long and happy years together.